Welcome one to another episode of Play It Through, and on this edition it's The Simpsons, Bart vs. The World, brought to us by Acclaim. Bart vs. The World is the sequel to Bart vs. The Space Mutants, also available on NES and multiple other home consoles, while Bart vs. The World was only made for the original NES. The game has you playing as, well, Bart Simpson going to different areas of the world, taking on different members of the Burns family. Each level has a secret item to collect, and if you're able to do so, you will get not only a special extra level at the end of the game, but also a special ending as well. So here we go with Bart vs. the World for the NES. When we start up the game, we can either start a brand new game, or you actually can go through and practice some of the levels in the game. Once you start off, you'll get your opening storyline before you're able to make your first menu selection. After the opening cutscene, we will then come to our first selection menu. Here you can select to go right into a level, or actually complete one of several different minigames. Depending upon what level you're currently on in the game, you can have different minigames to select from. You do not need to complete the minigames in order to complete the game, just focus on the main levels. Though some of the minigames are fun, like The Simpsons Trivia, and other ones not so much, like Picking the Coffin. At the beginning of the very first level, you're going to run over to the left side of the ship and drop down here where Maggie is. All of a sudden, a little crusty ship will show up and then just disappear. Interestingly enough, you've actually collected the first of the crusty items in the game. Collecting these crusty items will allow you to unlock the secret ending. Then all you need to do is climb up to the top of the ship here, and you can make it to the exit. After completing the first level, I go into the Simpsons trivia and just mess around with that. Being a long-term Simpsons fan, these questions are of course really no difficulty, as they only take place within the first few seasons of The Simpsons. And the second level of the game is the Great Wall of China. Now this level is a little bit more difficult, as you actually have to skateboard down the Great Wall. After going through the first opening, you need to jump up and make contact with Lisa here. This will unlock the crusty item later on in the level. Jump over the small little bits on the ground that are broken up, and go through the doors at the end of the sections watching out for the dragon. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to kind of line Bart up with this, but after a little bit of practice you shouldn't have too much trouble. After making this jump on this ramp, you're going to jump up here. As you can see, on the wall itself is a golden crusty statue, the second of the crusty items. Continue along going down the wall of China, just dodging and using the ramps in order to make it over the gaps. The controls in Bart vs. the World are the exact same as they were in Bart vs. the Space Mutants, so this makes the game pretty difficult. On normal walking levels, you're going to have to hold down the jump button in order to run, and to do a running jump, you actually have to press A and B at the same time. This takes a lot of getting used to, and it's very awkward. 
After completing the two levels, you can then go to the boss fight. For here, we have our first boss fight against Fu Manchu Burns. What we have to do is time it correctly while the fan is closed on him in order to hit him in the face with one of our explosive weapons. After hitting him several times, you'll complete the stage and be able to move on to the next level. The second level of the game is the North Pole, and we start off with the cave stage, and this is where things start to get a lot more tough in the game. You'll have to run along this part watching out as of course all these spikes are falling down towards you, making jumps over small gaps, and this is where platforming really first comes into play. The game loves to give you tons of small platforms to jump across, and because of this it can be very difficult. When you make it over here, start climbing going back and forth, left and right, up all the very small platforms. After climbing up for what seems like forever, and trust me this is the easiest of these kind of segments in the game, you'll eventually come to Marge on the left side of the screen. When you see her, what you're going to want to do is actually use the projectiles she throws out in order to bounce them back at the Krusty statue which is located to the left side. After you're able to hit the Krusty statue several times, it will fall. You then also have to fall all the way back down in order to actually collect the Krusty statue. This is pretty annoying as you'll then have to start climbing your way back up these set of very small platforms. Use this time though to master the controls, because there's areas later in the game where you have to be very precise with the jumping as well, and this area is a little bit more lenient to get used to it. When you make it to this set of platforms, run all the way to the right side, and guess what? You'll have more small platforms to start jumping up and making your way up to the next section. Thankfully, there isn't really any enemies to deal with during this section, but it doesn't really matter since the jumping is so tricky and cumbersome that it will definitely take you some time. Run over to the right here and then run into this rock formation, moving it just slightly each time you do so that you can actually jump over it into this section. Here you have to be very careful because if you fall down you will end up losing a life and you actually have to wait for these bubbles to form so that you can then bounce off the bubble in order to make it over to the right side. Make sure that the bubble is fully formed before attempting to jump on it. Finally though, at the end of this section is the map icon taking us to the level selection screen. Here where once again we can complete some of the mini games or jump right into the next level. Here we're introduced to another fun mechanic. This is the icebergs. In order to get these things to move, you have to keep jumping, and you have to get a nice little rhythm going in order to keep speed going. Start off very slow at first, just doing one or two jumps so you can kind of get used to how the momentum works on the icebergs. This is going to take a while to get used to as well, and especially when you're going to have to jump from iceberg to iceberg. Once you get more used to it, you can definitely get a nice rhythm going, timing jumps every other second or so, allowing you to keep speeding along and hopefully be able to not fall off. After this segment though, you will get projectiles from Lisa who is standing there, and you're going to come to an igloo. Jump up into the air and use your projectiles to throw at the igloo, and you'll slowly start destroying the pieces of the igloo. After destroying enough of them though, you will see a frozen crusty item amongst all of the ice cubes itself. After destroying enough of them and exposing the item, and you have to completely expose the item, you will be able to grab it. Once you have it in your possession, continue over to the right to another iceberg. If you end up falling off these icebergs, you end up having to go back to the beginning of the area, and it makes it really difficult and annoying to have to keep doing this segment. Now there are enemies above you. The birds, I think, can technically hurt you if you jump at them, so I try to prevent myself from jumping too high, but I usually never end up having an issue with them. Just the whole jumping back and forth to the icebergs like this is usually what ends up killing me. Thankfully though, that is the end of the area and we can move on to the boss battle. 
Now for the boss against the abominable Snowburns, what you'll have to do is wait for him to pop out, and then do a nice jump on his head. You can time it actually correctly, if you're able to just see him barely coming up, do the jump towards him, and you'll be able to hit him before he's able to even throw out any projectiles. Once you're able to deliver five hits to the top of his head, he's defeated, and we move on to the next level. The first level of the Egypt area is the Great Pyramid. When we start off this level, start off by climbing up just a little bit, and you're going to find a Bartman icon to the right. With Bartman, you're able to now fly for a short period of time. You can use this greatly to your advantage. Fly up the pyramid-like structure, and watch out for the rocks as they come down. There is some spear throwers, but with that whole Bartman ability, you'll be able to fly right past them. Once inside the pyramid, you'll go down this big ramp and have to jump up here and jump between all these very small platforms. Once again, hopefully you've gotten used to the jumping mechanic at this point. You're then going to use this platform to actually spring yourself upwards. This is a little bit tricky of a jump, but you'll be able to pull it off. It's kind of like a spring and you just have to time it correctly. Then as you're continuing upwards, watch out for this rock that's rolling down towards you and then wait a second on these little rocks in order for this big one to appear and then it'll start actually moving. If you played Super Mario World at any point, you'll pretty much be used to this. The problem is it doesn't last forever and will disappear quickly, so you'll have to jump over to the far right, jumping over a bat in the process. During this hallway, bait the bats to start coming towards you and then do a nice jump over them. Now before jumping to the small platforms, instead drop down to the level below and go over to the left. Here you're going to find Lisa playing the saxophone. You'll have to wait for a little bit for her to play her song, but once she is done, you will be able to collect the next Krusty item after seeing a few fireworks. With the Mummy Krusty now in your possession, climb back up to the right and move to another one of these moving platforms. Just follow along as it will start to head upwards towards the top of the screen. Eventually, it will make it all the way up to this level, and then you can actually jump off of it to the very small, little squares, and make it to the exit itself. The next level is the Valley of Egypt stage. Be very careful of tornadoes that are going to start coming towards you. These tornadoes can actually jump, so you'll have to either run under them or jump over them while they're moving along the ground. You move very slowly in the sand, and you'll have to keep jumping to avoid from falling into the sand itself. Sometimes you can use this to advantage in order to sink a little bit into the sand and let the tornadoes jump over you. If you need to and you have projectiles at your disposal, you can use these to also help you take out those tornadoes. Jump down here and head over to the far right side where you will find Maggie. Free her from the tornado and you'll get the next crusty item. Once that is in your possession, drop down all the way to a few levels below. After falling down several levels, then you'll want to hold right so that you'll land on the right platform and not fall down into the lava. Now, this is where you're going to have to grab the Bartman ability from the right, go through the door quickly, and fly up as fast as you can. Keep heading up to the upper left to slightly diagonal, you'll eventually come to the giant pharaoh mask in the background. Here, you're going to go inside the right ear of the pharaoh, and you will make it to the next level. The next level is another level where we're actually going to be using the Bartman ability again. You'll be on the bottom section here, don't even bother going upwards, just run all the way over to the far right. Keep running, watching out, there is some enemies like the floating snake enemies, but they'll just hover over you. Grab the Bartman ability in the far right, and then start heading upwards watching out for the snakes as you do so. When flying up, you're going to come to a giant open mouth with Homer attached to it. Hit Homer so he falls in, and it'll actually give you the next crusty item. You didn't see it here, but it did appear for a very brief second, that's why that little firework animation went off. Once you have that, you'll be back to the level selection screen here. I'm going to do another set of Simpsons trivia before jumping into the boss fight for the Egypt stage. 
The Ramsey's Burns fight is actually really easy. All you need to do is jump up and pull the string that's to the left of his carpet. Every time you end up pulling the string, you can see it gets smaller and smaller until he ends up falling off screen. Jump at it five or six times, he'll be defeated, and we move on to the final level of the game, the Hollywood stage. Just like all the other areas of the game, the Hollywood level is broken up into several little stages as well, the first one being the pirate ship, which ends up looking similar to the pirate ship we dealt with back in the China level, the first level of the game. Start off by going to the right side and then climbing up a ladder. Along this way, you're going to have to deal with some pirates, and you're going to have to time it so you can kind of get the pirates away from the ladders and be able to climb up them. There's a few flying parrot-like enemies, and the cannons in the background sometimes will fire. Use your projectiles to take out the rats on the small platforms before attempting to jump up them platforms. You'll be able to get a little bit of notice from the cannons before they end up firing, so just wait for them to fire before attempting, of course, to jump past them. Work your way up several ladders till eventually you make it to more of the top portion of the ship where you'll come to a giant netting. Once you're to the giant netting, start climbing up. Along the way, there's some holes that will get in your way that prevent you from going straight upwards, and there will be some pirates waiting for you on ledges and parrots and rats. But just keep on climbing. Along the way, when you make it to the second section, cannonballs will start coming towards you from the left and right sides. Just wait for them to arc over you, and then continue climbing up the net. You may have to take a hit or two here, though sometimes it's really hard to actually get the pirates to move away from you. Bait to several of these birds to come flying towards you, wait for them to pass, avoid the rat, and once again, just, well, keep climbing up. Once you make it up to this platform, the final area of this section, you have to climb all the way up, you can't get off the netting earlier, you're gonna do a big running jump over to the far right. You won't be able to land on the platform with the crusty head there, but you'll land a good distance away, and then you'll start climbing up the next set of netting. This section really isn't too difficult, just annoying that you'll have to take your time, eventually coming to Maggie at the very top. Once you make it to Maggie, you'll have to wait for a little bit, but eventually the crusty pirate flag will descend and you can grab it, and then do a big running jump over to the far right side. Just keep running now to the right, doing a little bit of climbing, unfortunately you have to for some reason, you can't just run past the netting. And when you make it to the next ledge, do another huge leap of faith. Eventually you'll come to the edge of the wall, just hang off a little bit from the edge itself and you'll land directly on the map icon and be able to move on to the second Hollywood soundstage level. This is technically the last level of the game if you haven't gotten the crusty items. If you're able to collect all the crusty items, including the one located in this level, you will unlock the third soundstage level. Along the way here, you're gonna have gargoyles that are bouncing up and down. You have to jump over them or avoid them by running underneath them. There's a little bit of tight platforming with some pits along this big fenced area. Anytime the fence is broken up a little bit, that's when you will fall through it. You can only jump on the very, very top of the fence, as you can see. It's a good amount of enemies through this section, but honestly, it's better than the platforming we're gonna be dealing with in just a little bit. Go down into this grave and you'll fall all the way down to this coffin maze. Once in the coffin maze, go to the right here, go through the first coffin. In the second section, you're going to have to avoid a few spiders and other enemies, and just make your way through the straightforward path until eventually coming to another coffin. While this is a maze, it's actually a pretty easy maze as far as NES standards go. Drop down here and hug the wall to the right so you land on this set of platform. There's some grabby hands trying to come out of the walls, but at the bottom of this area is a coffin. Immediately, enter the next coffin just to the right of this, and now you're going to be in the worst section of the entire game. This area is a ton of different platforms for you to jump towards. You have to jump and you cannot do any kind of shortcuts. You have to go all the way over to the far right, go up a little bit, 
to the next level, go all the way left, then up, then all the way right, and repeat the process. There's a bunch of spiders and skeletons popping out of walls, and if you mess up the timing on this, if you make it up a few levels, you'll have to fall and maybe get lucky to land on a platform, or worse, get really far up and fall all the way down, you'll lose a life and have to do the entire section over again. This is by far one of the absolute most monotonous, boring, and difficult sections of any NES platformer. Just make your way slowly. Don't try to get ahead of yourself. Don't try to take any shortcuts whatsoever. Because trust me, you're just going to end up missing a platform and end up falling down below. Even once you get really good at this area, it still takes like four minutes to slowly climb all the way up to the top. Be sure to use your projectiles along the way to take out the spiders and some skeletons that may try to hinder your path. It's better just to take them out and waste the projectiles since we're really not going to need them anyway once we get to the top, instead of accidentally jumping, running into them, getting stuck, and end up falling all the way back down. While this game is far from perfect, I always have to say that I loved this game a lot more as a kid than I liked Bart vs. the Space Mutants. That game was one of those kind of games where I could never really quite figure out where I was supposed to go and what I was supposed to do, but at least with Bart vs. the World I was actually able to complete the game when I was young. Not saying that it's a great game to complete, but either way it's still a lot better and it's a heck of a lot better also than the later sequel to this game, Bart Meets Radioactive Man. While working your way up, Homer will be sticking out of one of the openings. When you see Homer, jump towards him, he will go away for a second, and then return with the last crusty item that we need to collect. Make sure you grab this before continuing up the different platforms. Right after Homer though, you are at the top level, and you just have to work your way over one more time to the far left, coming to the map icon, and going back in order to make it to the final stage of the game. So now we move on to Hollywood Soundstage 3. Like I mentioned before, this level is only unlocked if you've collected all the crusty items. You're basically starting off on an artist table, it's kind of cool. There's different compasses walking around, there's ink blots shooting up ink, and you even have to deal with the happy little elves as they come falling down from the sky trying to run into you. There's some bouncing erasers as well you'll have to jump over or run underneath. Large erasers make up the big platforms in between the tables. While going through, you'll see some sketches on the table and some pens moving back and forth. It's actually kind of a really cool concept for a bonus level. Here you have several reels of film that are moving up and down. Drop down several layers. You can speed up the process, as you can see, by just landing on one for a few seconds and then dropping down into it. Once you're on the correct one, you're going to start heading over to the right, you can move along the platforms, or just jump and avoid all the different enemies, movie equipment, itching and scratchy that may try to run at you. You can use these chairs to spring you upwards, and you're going to use this one here in order to spring you up into the exit sign. It's now time for the final boss of the game, and thankfully the final boss is actually really easy. He'll drop projectiles right away for you to pick up and then use at him, and you're just going to throw them at the back of him. You'll have to dodge a bunch of his projectiles that he's throwing out, and he does throw out quite a bit. Sometimes he'll go up into the air a little bit, and you'll have to wait for him to come back down. But overall, a very simple final boss fight. If you do run out of projectiles at any point, more will drop from the ceiling, so you can pick those up and continue launching them at him. After defeating him, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Bart vs. the World. Thank you. 
For collecting all the crusty items, not only did you get that extra final level, but you also get this ending, where as Bart, you get a stagnant picture of Smithers and Burns, and you can move back and forth and throw pies at them. They don't react whatsoever to your pies, even if you land a direct shot. They only do a little bit of squinting with their eyes, no hand motions or anything else. Also, it's funny that this segment actually doesn't end. You can just keep throwing pies at Smithers and Burns for as long as you want to. Well, I honestly never got to this screen as a kid. I found myself, even now, trying to just throw pies at them for a long period of time, waiting and hoping that maybe after a certain amount of them, something would happen. But I had no luck whatsoever. Maybe there is something that happens, but I couldn't get it to trigger. Either way, after getting bored of throwing pies at Smithers and Burns, that is the end of the game. You can reset and start the game all over again if you like. But with that, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. It's amazing how those little things actually do help the video get seen by more people on YouTube. I know it's dumb, but it kind of does actually work. If you enjoyed this, you may also like my Bart vs. the Space Mutants play it through I did a while back. You can do that by clicking right over here. That game is so much worse than the one we just did. And last but not least, if you enjoy anything on my channel, my Play It Through series, Snack Shack, Bar Geeks, or even my live streams, consider giving to my Patreon. Something as low as $1 a month can keep this channel going for years to come. Anyway, thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.